My name is Raji, and I'm back. I had black market injections in my cheeks, my temple area, my top lip, my chin, and along my jawline. and I have these huge golf ball sized nodules all over my face. So in about 2003, I was at a point in my transition that I felt like I needed to take it further. I did my face, my breast, my hips, and my buttocks. And about a year out, I had the horrible reaction in my face. Well, the story was that she went to an unlicensed practitioner who performed injections, I think in like a hotel room on Raji. And she injected into Raji substances like cement, fix-a-flat, industrial strength silicone, and God knows what else. And as bad as Raji may look here, people die from these injections. So in some ways, she may be one of the luckier ones, believe it or not. This one is probably sitting on top of a nerve that goes directly to your upper lip that elevates your upper lip. Mm. It's dormant. Leave them alone. Operating on Raji is risky. She'll get more tissue defects. She can have an infection. Nothing good will come out of it. Even though these substances were liquids when they were injected into her, they become solids after a while, especially cement. And you cannot suck these substances out. To remove them, you have to literally cut the substances out. And if they are around nerves and major blood vessels, you can create a bloodbath, you can cause nerve injury, and cause parts of her face to become paralyzed. And that's why she was probably turned down by so many plastic surgeons, including the ones on Botched. These are the two things we're worried about. Number one, if we go in there and try to remove these, we activate the inflammatory process and turn your face into an inflammatory mess. Oh. And number two, we're worried that the masses encase all the muscles, nerves, and blood vessels, and taking them out would do a lot of damage to the skin okay. and potentially could hurt your nerves. When substances that are not inert are injected into the body, like fix a flat and cement, the body will react by creating inflammation and inflammatory tissue around them. Now, Raji has been treated by doctors where they have injected steroids, which basically blunts the immune response and breaks down scar tissue to reduce that inflammation. But if you go in and start messing with it, there is a possibility, like Dr. Dubrow says, that you can cause the body then to start reacting all over again and create this whole process again, and those masses can get bigger. So how do we know that we're not going to wake the sleeping dragon. What we can do is start out with a relatively safe area okay. where there's no motor nerves that can be affected that right. can mess up your smile. Make an incision, remove any masses we find, and wait. This is an interesting idea, is you can go to an area like the chin where there aren't any major nerves that will cause facial paralysis. You can take that foreign substance and that mass out and see how the face does. If it gets inflamed, then you say, hey, look, we only touched one area, you leave the other areas alone. If it comes out fine, then it gives you the sense that, hey, maybe you can go after some of the more kind of difficult areas uh, and do that safely. Then we start getting towards these larger masses. Okay. We may then take one out, take two out, tighten you a little bit that time, okay. or if they're coming out really beautifully. Uh, take them all out. Take huh? them all out, mm -hmm. do a facelift, and done. That is a really big undertaking because these masses are so close to the skin that if you were to try to go in and lift the skin up like you would with the facelift and the masses are, if they're too close to the skin that you cut off the blood supply to the skin, the skin can die and she could have literally patches on her face of no skin where the skin turns black, it basically sloughs off and you've got no skin there and you have the underlying fat exposed. So this is scary as sh what I'm talking about is getting you to the point where you look like that. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the Raji that I see wow. when I see you. That's what I would call normal. Mm -hmm. I would call that pretty, actually. Yes, but a difference, yes. Raji seems like such a survivor with such a great attitude 
that I really hope that Dr. Dubrow can do this for her. I'm a little nervous because I don't know if this is gonna be the first and last surgery, but this is the first step for me to finally be the woman I've always wanted to be. The nerves that go to the chin, the motor nerves are actually go on either side of the ball of the chin. So as long as he stays away from that area, he should be safe. Today's procedure will tell us whether or not we can move forward and help Raji. First, we will begin by making an incision under her chin and start the debulking process by extracting abnormal tissue and sending a specimen to pathology for examination. Finally, we will contour her chin to give it a more narrow and natural appearance. Chin surgery is often done by making an incision right underneath in the crease of the chin. Then you can dissect over the bone and pull the skin over and remove anything in that area. Now when I operate on the chin, let's say to put in a chin implant, I typically go inside the mouth and that way there's no visible scar at all. I wanna see what is going on in here. This is what dissecting in the uh, cheek's gonna be like. It doesn't pop out. The goal is to contour it and make it look like it's not there, right? Mm-hmm. Because again, this is all fibrous. I know, let's take a chunk of that out. Mm -hmm. When you've got a lot of inflammation around a mass like that, unfortunately, it's not like you see on Dr. Pimple Popper where you have a lipoma that just pops out for you. These things are usually stuck in place and they're like cemented in place and you've got to literally dissect little bits at a time to get rid of it. This is now a nice flap of normal tissue. Feel this, right? Yeah, it feels good. I have to admit it, Terry was right. This chin feels pretty good. We're done. It appears that whatever that person injected into her chin was injected pretty deep, leaving her with a rim of normal tissue above it, allowing that area to hopefully contour really, really nicely. So it sounds like it's a really good start for them. This episode is brought to you by my skincare line, Yoon Beauty. Our products combine natural and organic ingredients with the latest in scientifically proven anti-aging components like vitamin C and retinol. So if you're looking for healthy and youthful skin without the unnecessary chemicals, this is the skincare line for you. Check them out at dryunonline.com and use the coupon code 20OFF to get $20 off your first order over $99. We'll put a link in the caption below. All right, back to the video. I'm feeling pretty good. I think it looks really good. great. But I just want to hear they're going to say, you know, let's go for um, step two, you know? Swollen, but that's it. Looks good. Raji's five days out from her surgery. Her wound looks like it's healing with no signs of any adverse problems. We're a go. We're a green light. We're a green light? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God. So... On the last segment, I mentioned my buddy, Dr. Pimple Popper. And one of the things that she has done on her show that you may have seen is that she's taken biopsies of areas before the actual masses are removed. And that's kind of like what they did here, is they took a little bit out, sent it to a pathologist, make sure it is what you think it is. Raji's second surgery will start by making incisions behind her ears, and then I'll elevate the skin off her cheekbones, exposing the nodules. I will then use an orthopedic saw to remove pieces of the foreign material, leaving some intact to not disrupt the surface skin. Finally, I'll perform a standard facelift, tightening her skin and giving her cheeks a normal contour. When all is said and done, Raji's face will have the smoother appearance she deserves. I've been a plastic surgeon in private practice for 15 years, and I feel like I've seen and done pretty much everything. But I have never taken an orthopedic bone saw to a person's face during a facelift. I've got to hand it to Dr. Dubrow. To take a bone saw like that to somebody's face that is a big deal, and I would say that 99% of plastic surgeons wouldn't have the cojones to do that, and I may be in that 99%. What was that noise? Concrete. Yikes. Scary. Someone please come change my underwear. <laughs> I am in the middle of a construction zone. Can I have a saw? This is concrete. He is actually dealing with real concrete, real cement. The story is, is that this person actually injected cement into people's bodies. And cement, unlike let's say industrial strength silicone, hardens <laughs> like a rock. And that's why he's pulling the saw out. This is cement. Let's see if we can saw it out.
Here's the top of it. See, look, it's gone now right here. Wow, you can hear as that saw is hitting that cement just how hard it is. I am just beside myself at how freaking cool this is. That is a hell of a lot better, isn't it? Oh my God. I think we did some good here today. And I think she's gonna look much, much better, hopefully normal. Now you may be wondering, just how long does a surgery like this take? When I do a typical facelift, it takes about three and a half to four hours. And when I look at what he's doing, that's a similar thing. You add, however, the complexity of removing these masses, and my guess is this operation was probably a five or six hour surgery, maybe even longer. But it is so worth it when you can change the life of somebody like he's doing. I've lived a life of having people look at me and judge me, the gawking, the laughing. There were times where I thought, you know, am I going to make it through this? For my surgery, I was known as Cinder Blockerella. I didn't feel like a woman. I felt like a monster. Now, thanks to Dr. Debro, I finally feel like the woman that I've always wanted to be. Wow, those are some incredible results. And I'll be the first surgeon to admit that I could not get a result like that. For him to take Raji's case on and to use a bone saw and do these operations with the high risk and the fact that she ended up looking so great, you really got to hand it to him that he is a top rate A plus plastic surgeon. I know where true beauty is. I know that it's inside. You don't judge a book by its cover, but I will say this, it's pretty damn good to have a revamping of my cover. <laughs> and they've, they've really given me like a whole new future. Dreams do come true. It's so awesome to see her story have such a happy ending. This is one of the many episodes of Botch where I am impressed with what the Botch doctors have done for somebody who's in a really difficult position. If you enjoy watching these botched episodes as much as I do, check out this playlist I have right up here where I react to multiple episodes of botched, people who have had issues that will blow your mind. And if you've been enjoying my channel, please subscribe and always remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.